This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on that at the end of the video. Today we're making pasta e ceci. This is so easy, really cheap, and super delicious. All right, guys, I always like to go over the ingredients. This is a simple one. Even prepping these ingredients only took about five minutes. I have roughly a cup of onion, celery, and carrot. The exact amounts here was like one medium carrot, two celery ribs, and a medium onion but you know, use as much or as little as you like here. It's totally fine. Garlic, I have three cloves that are minced. Now the recipe calls for five cloves, but those cloves were huge. So I did three minced. Again, you know, to your taste, if you like a ton of garlic, use like 12 cloves of garlic. I'm not gonna be upset if you do that. I think that's great if you like a lot of garlic. We have one cup of tomato. You could take like three tomatoes from a can, plum tomatoes, and you just crush them. That'll equal about a cup. We have uh, four cups of vegetable stock. You can also use chicken stock. This is low sodium. Or you can use water if you want. You can really use anything you like here. And if you want, use the vegetable stock and everything is pretty much a vegetarian or vegan dish. Pasta. I just got these today. I've never used these before. What do they call Tara? Penette. Penette. Yeah, so it's like tiny penne. I have a lot of pasta that I like to some wouldn't say collect, but you could use elbows for this if you want. You could use farfellini, Dittolini or Tubetti. DiCecco calls theirs Tubetti. Uh, basically all the other brands call it Dittolini. There's a lot of other little pastas too. I love it with the small shells. These little tiny shells, then the chickpeas go inside of it. It's, it's, it makes it really nice. I have three 15 ounce cans of chickpeas. All I did was drain them. I didn't rinse them or anything. And then for our aromatics, we have a little bit of the hot red pepper, rosemary, and my secret weapon, the Parmigiano Reggiano rind that I've probably used in about 80 videos now. And uh, it's great. It's great for soups like this. So I have a Dutch oven. This is a uh, six quart, 6.5 quart, I think, which will be totally more than adequate for this. You could even use probably a four quart. I'm gonna heat it up to a little less than medium, about a four out of 10. I didn't show you one of the ingredients. I'm just using extra virgin olive oil. If you're not worried about this being vegetarian, then you would start, you could definitely start with the pancetta. But typically this recipe, it's like done meatless. So you wouldn't use the pancetta. I'm coating the bottom here with probably, probably about a half a cup of oil we're putting in here, a lot of oil. Here's our veggies and we'll just put them all in. And we're gonna let these cook until they get nice and soft. And you can put a little salt on them to try to accelerate that process of releasing their water and cooking a little quicker. If you feel like you're burning it all here, just lower your heat or even put a tiny bit of water in there. That'll just stop it. Because you really don't want to put any color on this. We just want to soften them. I get asked this question all the time about color, no color. A lot of these dishes, no color on it. You're just softening it up. Put a lot of color on it. You're going to change the taste of, of the veggies uh, significantly. Okay, so it's been about 12, maybe 13 minutes total. And that's how it looks. Now the garlic. Make a little room, you can put it in all that oil you have there. And you can get that to cook into the oil for about two minutes until it's very fragrant. And you can definitely just like, you know, forego doing the sofrito and just use garlic. You could just, you know, you could do onion and the garlic. Oh, and anchovy, if you like that, do that, you know, that's gonna like really boost that umami flavor. If you want hot red pepper, and I definitely want hot red pepper, put it in for like 30 seconds now about a quarter teaspoon, but you know, use more if you like. And then you could just put everything in, like the recipe just says, just dump the tomato, the liquid, the beans, or you could put your tomatoes in for like a second. If you're gonna use tomato paste, which is great, then I would fry that paste out for about five minutes before putting your liquid in. We got our beans. Well, chickpeas are beans though, right, Tara? They're all legumes. Not a different category? They're also called garbanzo beans. Garbanzo beans yeah. are right. Yes, yeah. of, cor of course they're beans. And then here's four cups of low sodium vegetable stock. I'm gonna try really carefully to not make a mess here. What you could do with your rosemary, you could take all the leaves off of it and you can chop them up or you could just throw the whole thing in, which, which I'm gonna do. And then the parm rind. So let's bring this up to a boil. What I want you to do now is just turn it down to about a simmer and just let it simmer for like 15 minutes before we put the pasta in. What do I mean by a simmer? Like tiny little bubbles. That's it, just tiny bubbles. So on your stove, it would probably be about a three out of 10, maybe a 2.5. And I'm gonna leave it uncovered here, so it's gonna encourage a little bit of evaporation. Be back in 15. Been going for about 20 minutes. Consistency is gonna be basically the same. Chickpeas are like, you know, much more substantial than other beans. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just taste this, do like an initial taste here. Season with a little salt and pepper. Salt level's pretty good, maybe a touch more. 
And I'm gonna put some pepper in here, some black pepper. I love a lot of black pepper on it when, when you serve it, but it's also good in here. Then what we're going to do is, if you want, you don't have to do this at all, you can mash up some of your beans. You can use your back of your wooden spoon here and you can just push them right into the side here and just keep forcing them into the side and you'll mash them up somewhat, but you'll keep it fairly rustic. And you can also blend this with an immersion blender that I have right here. You know, our rosemary is pretty much done here. I'll just remove it temporarily while I do this. You can leave the cheese rind in there. It's, you pro it's not gonna fit through, the, um, through your immersion blender, so you'll be all right. You wanna do this step before you put your pasta in. Once you put your pasta in, you can't do this. You can't thicken it at that point unless you wanna blend your pasta, which I assume you, you, know, you don't wanna do. So I'm just gonna lower more just to a low simmer. These chickpeas are pretty substantial, so basically they gotta fit through this little part here on your immersion blender or they won't blend. Otherwise, you're gonna have to kind of go from the top and just kind of like gently force it down without going too high or it will go everywhere. Oh, careful. <laughs> so I did it a lot there, but we'll mix it all through and we'll see our consistency. And that looks good. I mean, I want a lot of my uh, chickpeas in there. I don't want it to be complete mush, though you definitely could do that. So now I'm about medium heat here. About a five out of 10, this is gonna be perfect. I have right here, four cups of hot water. We might need it, we might not need it. We have four cups of the liquid in. I'm gonna take our half a pound of our, what is it called, Tara? Panette. Panette, I love that word. I'm gonna put that in and we're gonna cook this pasta until it is al dente. It's gonna take a couple minutes longer probably than it will take if you were boiling in you know, you know, st straight water. I get these questions all the time. I get it for this dish. Uh, I get it for, you know, for pasta bazool, for uh, pasta potato, all of them. They say, you don't put the pasta in there. It makes, it makes it mushy. It does make it mushy, but it makes it better if you do this because the pasta then will drink up this delicious sauce that you just spent a lot of time making. It's the same principle why you don't just take your pasta and dump sauce on at the end, you finish in the pan. If you were making like five pounds of this and you wanted like leftovers for three weeks, obviously do your pasta on the side. You can see it's really thick right now. I just tried the pasta. The pasta's not even close to done yet. It's gonna need probably another three minutes or more. So it's so thick, I'm gonna put a little bit more of that hot water in there. And that's all you have to do then just to keep it going because if you let it reduce too much, your pasta will just completely stick onto the bottom of the pot. You just have to keep doing this you don't want to leave the room. It's maybe a little, little bit hard here, but it's pretty much done. And then you do your final seasoning here, salt, pepper, anything it needs. I think it tastes great. Let's serve this up and bring the taste tester down. Tara is here because James, the taste tester, couldn't make it today. He, uh, he's feeling a little under the weather. So you let me know what you think of this masterpiece. Okay. Well, <laughs> I already know that I like crushed red pepper on pasta y chachi, so I'm gonna add a little bit. Yeah. I know you had some in there already, but it didn't look like it was quite enough for- I had a lot in there. We, are, we already ate like a bowl of it. This is the second bowl right now. What do you think? Okay. I think it's delicious. It's really creamy. The pasta is perfect consistency. Love the, the chickpeas. I personally like it a little spicier, so I would add even more of the no kidding. crushed red pepper. Yeah, because I don't know, every time like I eat this dish, I like to add a lot of crushed red pepper because the first time I ever ate it, the person who made it for me put a lot of she did. hot red pepper in it. Yeah, so it like kind of takes me back to that time. You know what, it, it tastes like, it tastes healthy. Like it tastes like it's nourishing you. Well, it is. I mean, it's really not bad for you. I mean, I mean, I know it's pasta, but the beans, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of beans in here. Like I did three, three 16 ounce cans of beans. I, I give it a nine. A nine, huh? Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. I, I will definitely take a 
a nine. I mean, I'm sure the taste tester would have given it a 10 because it's pasta, but you know. <laughs> Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that can help your business stand out with a beautiful website, connect with your audience, and sell almost anything from the content you create to your products. I love how Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content by selling access to online courses and other gated content. They also have e-commerce templates, inventory management, and a checkout process that allows for secure payments. And their email marketing features allow you to connect with subscribers and provide them with valuable and engaging content. So head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash sip and feast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.